A very happy weekend to you. Welcome to The Final Wager. I'm Keith Williams. It's a few days before Christmas. And if you're not shopping, you're probably out at holiday gatherings, and that was the case for me this weekend. So not a lot of time for analysis and discussion of game theory and math, but here we are. And I watched this game late on Friday night. It was around 3 in the morning after I got home from a... Uh, Christmas party, and instead of doing the analysis, then I decided to write down what I thought each player would wager. I wasn't exactly right, but I was kind of close on two of them. But let's go through the math, because this is a really tricky situation for everybody. So we'll start, as always, with what happens if Julie, our second place player, wagers everything and doubles her score. Assuming she gets it right, she'll have 28,600. So Claudia, to cover this, will have to wager uh, it's going to be twelve thousand four hundred. Should she miss with that wager, she will be left with thirty eight hundred. So to stay above that, Julie can wager up to ten thousand five hundred, and Kiana thirty eight hundred. That's going to leave her at most twenty six hundred. Okay, now if Kiana doubles up, she's going to have 12,800, so Julie can wager up to 1,500 to lock Kiana out. And that's why I wagered that, that's why I put down 1499 for what I thought Julie was going to wager, because that daily double that she hit, I think it was 800 level, she was pretty skittish on, and it cost her the lead heading into final. Well, not that she knew it at the time, but she could have wagered a lot more. It was early in the round, but <clears throat> after having... Did she make a tree daily double on the previous one? It's been a couple days since I watched, so... A little rusty, but I think she did do a tree daily double, and uh, I was a little surprised when on a low-level clue, she went for 2500 Okay, now we look at some mind games. So, Julie has a couple options here. Julie could wager 1500 or 1499 and if Kiana doubles up, it's not going to matter, because Julie would finish above her no matter what. But the thing is, if she gets it right, she's going to have 15.8. And that's not quite Claudia's total yet. So Claudia, she thinks Julie is, gonna, Julie is going to go small, <clears throat> could wager up to 3.99. And I thought she would go for that small amount. If Claudia does wager that 13.9, or that 3.99, 400, she's going to be at 16.6. So Julie might want to consider wagering at least... Uh, 1,500 plus 800 is going to be 2,300 to account for that possibility. If Julie goes for this 10,500 amount, I think that Claudia and Julia, Julie are too close for this to make a difference, for this to make sense for Claudia. 24,800, uh, she would have to wager 8,600, so I'll put this down here. I don't really like it. But if she's wrong with that wager, she's going to be left with uh, 7,600. So Julie would have to wager at most uh, 7,600 would be 6,700. So we'll cap it there. I'll actually pair that there. And uh, Kiana would have to wager at least 1,200. So I'll put that as a minimum for her. Okay, now if Kiana goes for this 2,600 amount, that was all just Julie's uh, wagers, what Claudia should do uh, to counter those. If Kiana goes for this 2600 amount, she's going to have 9000 So Julie could cap her wager at 5300 And I'll just take that out. And Claudia could cap her at another 1900 to that. So it would be 7200 to say above that. And in response, if Kiana's afraid that either of these two will go small, I would just wager everything. In fact, in this position, because I'm playing against someone who has shown that she's not uh, comfortable wagering big, even on what should be an easy clue, that I would go big. <clears throat> go for the 6400 even though it might cost me on the downside if both of them go for the lockout. 
Now, uh, zero cover wagers. If uh, I'm Claudia and Julie, they're separated by 1900. So on the upside, as Julie, you're going to wager at least 1900 or 3800. And I'm going to come back to that on Claudia. At most 1900 or at most 3800. Kiana and Julie, well, they're separated by too much, so it's not going to matter at all. Julie on the downside, um, they're separated by 7900, so I'm going to throw that in there too, but I don't think that's going to come into play. And Claudia, 9800. Okay, now we have the fun job of pairing up which wagers go with which. And this is something that when I get around to my next part of my wager tutorial, I'll discuss. So what you want to do is you want to start with the top minimum wager and then pair that up with the uh, closest maximum wager to form a range. So 12,400 is going to be the lockout for Claudia. Nothing bigger than that, so we'll leave that as one thing. 8,600 and 9,800, uh, I would pair those two together. So. Uh, what's the next lowest? There is no next lowest, so those are the two ranges I really consider. The other wager I consider is this 400 amount. Everything else, because it doesn't have a minimum wager to pair with, gets tossed out. Over here on uh, Julie, so this 2300 is for her. This 10,500 is the most, um, but what's the lowest minimum wager I see? 3800 is going to go with, uh, looks like 5,300. 1,900, no, 2,300 is the next one. I don't see a minimum to pair that with, so I guess I'll just put 2,300 to something. That's if she thinks that Claudia's going to go for this 400 amount. And then next, so 1,900's gone. Um, I guess 1,500 might be the next one down. Yeah, because if you can wager 2300, you might as well just go for 3800. Uh, and then 0 to 1500. So those are really the only two ranges that I see uh, that work if I am. Oh, keep that, sorry, 1500. If I'm Julie. And then the last thing we look at is Kiana. 1200 to 2600 is one range, but I would strongly consider going for everything. So I will, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write up what everyone actually did. So this is up to 9,800. And I'm just going to delete everything else. So to be perfectly honest, I don't really like any of these wagers. Julie's, I guess, is okay, 1901, but it doesn't cover this $400 possibility out of Claudia. Claudia's 5,000, that just looks like a random number she pulled out of thin air, and Kiana, I think we all know where she got her wager from, which, if you're going to go so that you're not going to win on the downside, you might as well go for everything. And you'll see that had Julie missed, she would have had that 12,399, and uh, Kiana would have to wager everything to have a shot there, so no reason not going for broke there. Could have cost her. Uh, big time because it doesn't even cover Claudia's miss if she misses with that 5,000. She'd have 11,200 and yeah, we see what happens when you don't make the proper play. But I guess it didn't really matter. The outcomes would have been the same either way. And uh, <clears throat> Claudia has now won two games and uh, she's going to get a break, perhaps longer than usual because... Word on the street is Alex had some emergency surgery when this next game on Monday was supposed to tape. And for the second time in Jeopardy history, and this is also still a rumor, we'll find out tomorrow, a returning champ will not play on Monday. So she'll pull up Priscilla Ball. Priscilla Ball couldn't make her uh, second game, I think. And so she had to go into a different taping in the future. So we will have returning co-champs, I guess. They're not really co-champs, but two... People who have won on Jeopardy before in regular play, <clears throat> which is now impossible normally due to the banishment of ties. So that'll be fun to watch. 
And yeah, this turned out to be a more fun situation than I thought. I went on for a long time, but if you are interested in the math, if you're going on the show and uh, want to learn about some of the thought processes that go into not only the math, but also into picking a wagering range, came to the right day. And uh, I hope you'll continue to join me. I'm hoping tomorrow, Monday, because it's Sunday, here on the final wager.